Hey guys, Steve Allaire. Today we're going to look at the new Tier 6 Japanese destroyer, Yukikaze. Uh, there's a Hellsinger on the screen there. We got Fishbowl Guy and Azure Lane Otago. So, you know, boost boosting the Torp performance as much as we can. Azure Lane Otago increases the Torp concealment. Uh, Fishbowl Man increases the knots in the water by 3 knots at the level I got him at. I think it's like 14.2. So, uh, this is kind of the ultimate reaction time build reaction time is basically a function of uh torpedo speed and detectability and reaction time is a stat that's not in the game you got to do a little bit of math but you can figure out how long uh the enemy has to react to the torps basically from the time they pop up on the screen and start beeping to the time they impact that's the reaction time and on this build we got seven seconds so note the deployment here. We're going to be moving forward. This is a Haven game. Capture the base so we don't have any bases to contest. But we're moving forward trying to spot. Uh, we got a cruiser and a battleship behind us. They're going to immediately peel off and uh, attempt to concede the side. We're going to try and pull forward here. Hope to get them some spotting. And maybe if they want to utilize that big island that they're currently uh, sailing behind. That's fine with me as long as they're going to shoot these targets. But eventually they just decide, no, nah, we're going to go for an 8v6 overload on the other side of the map. So, you know, if you're going to go for an 8v6, you better push that ad advantage and wrap up that side. And, you know, it's going to be a slug slugfest. So basically you're committing to killing all the ships. That means you got to have the skill to kill them. We'll see how the blue team fares in this. But, you know, here's I'm still trying to play... Uh, for the win at this point in time. Spotting these ships, assuming there was a destroyer over here, but nope. New Orleans was the concealed ship that pops up. And note, you know, we don't normally try and... Uh, <laughs> Fuso got blew up. Wow. I did not realize that that happened. Uh, normally we don't recommend uh, torping cruisers. That's not a priority target. Cruisers, they got sonar a lot of times. They got maneuverability and dodge ability. So torping cruisers, difficult. And usually not what you want to be doing but we got the super screamers on these 83 knots and they're coming in hot so we kind of spread them out a little bit here and again he's going to have just shy of seven seconds to react to these puppies so same exact torps in terms of damage and speed as the udachi we actually get an extra knot of or an extra kilometer of range and uh, we give him a nice little whack there two hits for some reason he's not damage commenting the flood this really doesn't make much sense to me uh, he doesn't have a lot of HP to deal with, but since he doesn't put out the flood, uh, we go ahead and actually get a HIGON out of the deal. So, <laughs> appreciate that. I'm not sure why he didn't hit the damage con, but again, you know, we're not going to apologize for our uh, opponent's gameplay. Anyway, now we're in kind of full battleship torping mode here, and this is where the Yudachis start to drool. You know, they got we got no destroyers over here that, you know, we can see... One red destroyer spot, and then the other one uh, grayed out all the way across the map. So they don't have destroyer play. Uh, we popped the smoke there, trying to support getting a shot on the Venom. Luckily, one of our teammates shot him, took him out. So we tie up the game in terms of ship count. We're down a battleship, they're down a cruiser. Uh, but, you know, normally this is the type of gameplay that when you get bogged down in this, uh, it's pretty detrimental. Torping battleships, especially this early in the game... Not that valuable, but basically what's going on here, again, we have, we should have a significant numerical advantage over there. So I'm kind of doing the weak side uh, roll, at least that's what I'm attempting to do over here. Slow these guys down, harass them. I don't want them to push into the base, get those crossfire shots that we are talking about earlier, and wipe out our team that way. So it's up to our team to press the numerical advantage. If they can't capitalize on it, there's nothing we can really do about it, but again... You know, we're highlighting this game because the damage is going to make you drool. But I want you to really be paying attention to, okay, what is killing these battleships actually accomplishing? And you might be saying to yourself, well, why are you doing it then? And the reason is because, number one, I'm trying to slow them down, kill them if possible. But I'm also trying to create a gap to the base because I can see the writing on the wall here. We're kind of, our team isn't really moving out of our base much they're getting surrounded. These West Virginia, the Fuso, they are getting the crossfire shots. So our team is going to start sustaining some casualties. At least that's my thinking. So I want to create a path to their base to pressure the base, potentially to capture it. And we're thinking, you know, most of their red fleet is going to be so far out of position that we may actually be able to capture it in this type of a situation. 
but we for sure want to be able to pressure the base, force them to turn around, and start to affect the score by preventing them from getting score. So destroyers, even in capture the base mode where you don't have as many bases to actually capture, you still want to be thinking about uh, affecting the score by getting on that base. Again, if you want to capture the base, if you can capture the base, that's kind of icing on the cake, but it's tough to do. It's not easy to get... Uh, on a cap for three minutes and not have anyone turn around and reset you. So that shouldn't be the mindset. But anyway, that's the long-term game plan. Again, we're mostly trying to slow these guys down. You know, you can see how far off course we're getting here. I'm kind of forced to disengage. And that kind of brings up, you know, one of the negatives about this thing, the Yukikaze. And that's the speed. We got 35 knots in the water, tied for last at the tier with the Orkin. 640 turn radius, you know, that's up there among the worst and uh you know rudder shift is outstanding 2.7 that's looks to be tied with the uh, sims actually for the best on my builds at least so overall you know aside from the the back and forth rudder shift mobility kind of an issue on this thing and i actually kind of get outrun by you know you can find like uh, battleships that will occasionally catch up to you if you're going against like a ganizen or something fast or cruisers for sure they can just straight up catch up to you in a lot of cases so you got to be very very careful you got to be looking on the map with this thing make sure that you know you're keeping those ships out of your blue ring but even if they're approaching your blue ring you got to give yourself a little bit more of a mental buffer and start to say to yourself if this guy turns and chases me can i actually get out of there it's tough to do in a lot of situations so that's one of the main drawbacks the other main drawback turret traverse is 26.1 on my build and i got twist and track on this thing that includes a boost to the turret traverse so you know buffed high level you know japanese destroyer commander with the turret traverse boost i still have easily the worst at the tier 26.1 seconds so the guns you're gonna have a real hard time beating any destroyer that you run into Perhaps the Asashio, just because your guns hit slightly harder, about 350 more damage per uh, full pen, you know, you know, full damage HE shell. But, you know, the turret traverse combined with the mobility issues makes it so you're going to have a hard time. If you run into any sort of American or any sort of gunboat or even the uh, smoke sonar combos of the Brits, the Germans, all these ships can kick the crap out of you and you need to be extremely afraid of all the destroyers in the game so that's initially i was just testing out the fishbowl guy whatever his name is uh i frankly didn't even look at the name but he doesn't have twist and drag and i'm like well with this ship with its limitations and with the sole focus being on the torpedoes you kind of almost need the twist and track just because the twist and track allows you to get these nice accurate zoning torps where you're maybe launching them quote unquote blind but you're still getting some information and it helps you avoid the destroyers. So anyway, jumping back into this game here, you see we've kind of pushed these battleships back. No battleships are going to like getting torped repeatedly from any sort of Japanese uh, destroyer. And the Yukikaze is basically one of the most terrifying torpedo attacks in the game at this point in time. Again, basically think the Yudachi torps at tier 6. A little bit longer range on a much... Uh, over, much less effective overall package in terms of the ship aside from the torps but the torps just by themselves nasty so you're going to want to be <laughs> aware of these things and you can see here basically the blue team got slaughtered inexplicably even though they had a massive numerical advantage over there uh, but the remainder of this game is going to basically going to be <laughs> demonstrating the torps and we want to talk about what to do in these situations because when you're playing capture the base mode as a destroyer and you're on the enemy base i see a lot of people making a lot of mistakes on that and it's usually pertains to an unwillingness to get off of the cap once you're on it you want to stay on the cap as long as possible because no they're not accumulating any points right now and you might be saying to yourself points are irrelevant at this point in time and yes we're almost certainly not going to win this game uh but what we could potentially be doing is we're still getting some points in the background. They're not. Let's say my battleship gets a couple kills and I go ahead and get two or three kills. Now if we can somehow even up the ship count, you know, Hail Mary type of a play, not very likely to happen. But if it happens and we've been sitting on this base, well, then all of a sudden we can come back 
and uh, win on score. At least that's the long shot. So last battleship goes down. You can see here we're on our own. Devin Schwa coming in here. And note the spread on that, if you saw that a moment ago. We did a fairly narrow spread where the torps were not quite stacked on top of each other, but almost. Not a big wide spread trying to cover a bunch of distance. But I'm tightening that spread up, hoping the guy isn't going to turn. And with these super screamers here, 83 knots in the water, they don't have as much time to really think about changing what they're doing. You know, the longer the torps take to get to the target, the more randomly people will just accidentally change their behavior Oh, I'm maybe I'll turn this way. You know, they're not really necessarily trying to counter what the destroyer is doing. If they are, then you know it's even more obvious that they're probably going to turn. But when you got torpedoes that are going 83 knots in the water, they get to the target pretty dang quick. So right here, I'm thinking about opening up on this guy. Got the smoke ready. Uh, maybe I can get one or two shots off here. He's got about 5k health. Each bar on the health bar is about is 5k. Uh, so you can see he's just shy of 5k right on it. It's going to be a tough kill. He's angled. Uh, again, the guns on this are not great. But, you know, we're, I'm still technically trying to win the game here. And uh, getting rid of the cruisers is going to be a key component to that strategy. But again, you know, this is extremely risky. And it's not that well advised. And this is kind of my problem with the Yukikaze and ships like the Asashio. Ships that are all in with the torpedoes. You really just don't have a lot of utility when it comes to other plays, you know. Yeah, we can launch these extremely dangerous torpedoes over and over again. And the torpedo reload on this one, by the way, is uh, 85 seconds. So just shy of a minute and a half. Not quite as quick as the Udachi. And we don't have the torpedo reload option. Note that either. But, you know, aside from this, there's not a lot we can really do. We can spot targets, but, you know, if our team doesn't actually utilize the spotting then that kind of goes out the window as well. So the, there's not a lot we can really do in the Yukikaze and ships like that, like the Asashio, uh, just kind of these weak one-dimensional ships. And I'm calling them weak as we're pummeling the ships with these uh, torpedoes, but I just don't think this is particularly valuable. If this is all you can do, torp ships, you know, yeah, we're hitting cruisers even, but usually all this thing's going to be really great at is torping battleships. That's a worthless play in a lot of cases. It's not that valuable. It's far too focused on by the vast majority of destroyer players who only think about torping battleships. Whereas good destroyer play, again, we talk about all the time, spotting, countering destroyers, capturing bases. Well, this thing isn't really that good at any of that. Spotting, yes, okay, but even as a spotter, it's not the cream of the crop because the mobility issues can get you in trouble. If you, you know, when you're spotting ships and something unexpected happens, if you got piss poor mobility, you usually get killed. So, Yukikaze is what it is. I mean, if you're in the mood to torp a bunch of guys, then you can have a great time in this. It's one of the best ships, if not the best ship in the game uh, for that. Let's, again, you know, we're talking about Yudachi Tops at Torp, Yudachi Torps at Tier 6, which is a powerful combination. And you can see we're just spreading targets out, just kind of flinging them out here. And watch how fast they're getting to the target. You know, these guys... They know I'm launching torps, like they're all kind of dodging and they're all being as evasive as possible. But they're having a real hard time dodging these things, and it's not particularly easy. You know, we're blasting these guys left and right here. And this is, you know, if you have 30 minutes to do this, you could win a game by doing this. I don't know where their enemy destroyer is, by the way. I was extremely confused throughout this. He should either be on my base, which is where I would be, or he should be over here trying to counter me. But we never see him for the rest of the game. But this play right here, killing all these guys, it may seem to you like, wow, we can actually pull this off. But it takes a long time. You know, we got a minute and a half, essentially, per salvo. And so we're going to need, you know, roughly one salvo per ship. That's about a four or five minute process if we're hitting all these torps, you know. And thus far, we haven't really been missing that much in this particular instance. But, you know, usually you're going to be missing the majority of your torps. So relying on killing ships with torpedoes is usually just a really bad strategy because, number one, it's a low percentage play. Number two, it takes a long time to accomplish. And number three, what am I doing here? I'm just killing ships where I need to be on the base. I need to basically <laughs> capture the base is the only way to win this, but they're all on the base, so it's impossible to actually win this game. But I figured, you know, this is quintessential Japanese destroyer play. This is going to tickle a lot of your guys' fancy. I just, again, this is not how I would... 
I don't think this is an effective game play style right here. You know, I'm just, again, I think due to the circumstances of this game, I kind of got forced to play this way in this game. Maybe you're seeing something I missed when I played it live that I should have been doing better. Maybe sticking with the team and then hanging back, trying to defend the base would have been a better option. I don't know. But, you know, when we're kind of forced, quote unquote, to just get into torpedo mode, well, this is what you can do. I think we're just going to wind up just shy of 200k here. And if we had more time, we'd get the crack in, no doubt. We'd get an extra 100,000 damage. And then we could post on Reddit this amazing damage record game and be like, what the heck, we still lost. Well, you didn't really do anything <laughs> to win the game. But again, in my opinion, there's only so much we could do on this one. That's it for that one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. Lots of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. Love to hear from you guys, and we'll see y'all later. Peace.